We're learning much more now about the lives lost in those brutal Hamas attacks on Israel two weeks ago. Among them, 23-year-old 23, 23 Shira Ayalon. She and a friend were killed by Hamas terrorists at that Nova Music Festival. Shira's sister, Adar Ayalon, joining us now from Tel Aviv. Adar, thank you so much for joining us. I wish we were just talking under different circumstances. And let me express our deepest condolences to you over your sister's death. First of all, what can you tell us about what happened to her? Um, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, two weeks ago, Shira and two of her friends went to the Nova Music Festival. And it's Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Shira called my dad, telling him there was bombing over there, which sadly become a regular thing in here. Um, she told him that she's scared and she's going to wait for the panic to come and come home. But 30 minutes after, she didn't answer her phone anymore. She was missing for five days. Um, and after five days, uh, we got a message from the army that they recognized her body. Um, her body lay down in the forest for five days. Apparently, uh, the terrorists surrounded uh, the party. They've been planning that for a while, apparently. And they just came inside, start to automatically shoot everybody over there, stealing the stuff from the bodies, kidnapping. After they done over there, the, they went to the nearest cities and kibbutzim, just broke into houses, killed families, babies, uh, kidnapped 200 people, 200 people, killing thousands of people. And for these days, uh, while she was missing, I tried to find some information. I watched um, the videos in Telegram, apparently the Hamas video themselves killing people, then uploaded it to Telegram and TikTok. So sadly, I watched all the horrible things that they did. And we, we were managed to look at her phone at the first day. We saw it in Gaza, so we thought they kidnapped her. Mm -hmm. But apparently, she was murdered. Uh, they shoot her in the back at around 8 AM. I talked to a lot of her friends that was in the party while I was looking for her. And the stories were the same. They said that once the shooting was starting, it was uh, complete chaos. They hide in the forest for hours. They describe it like they are running away from the Nazis. They try to call for help from, help from the army and the police, but nobody came because the terror there were hundreds of terrorists just shooting cars in the street, so nobody can get over there to help them. And apparently there were so many dead bodies over there that it took them, like they couldn't get the bodies to the hospital anymore because the, all of the hospital were full. So they bring the bodies, they collect the bodies and bring them to the near army base. This is why they, it's, it took them six days to recognize her and bring her to to bury her. And she lay, she lay in the forest for six days before we buried her. So sad. Adar, uh, tell us a little bit about your sister, Shira. What was she like? She just started her life. She was 23. She just uh, came back from India. She was very peaceful and kind. She was about to start a university um, psychological degree. And she was very gentle and very, very delicate. And she had nothing to do with this war. Like, I can't even imagine what kind of monster can shoot kids, innocent kids, not, not soldiers, civilians, innocent civilians that just came to party and to celebrate life. And we are heartbroken, like we're, we're devastated about it. She was so delicate and so peaceful and very nonviolent. She, she had nothing to do. 
I don't think that she could have survived this attack. No way that she could have survived it. So, so awful. Uh, the IDF, as you know, says more than 200 people are being held hostage in Gaza right now. I know your family tracked yes. your sister's phone there, thinking she was perhaps one of the hostages. What was it like for your family during this awful, awful time? My parents actually said that they prefer her to be dead than to get kidnapped because they know the, the terrorists, they abuse the, the, the people who got kidnapped, they abuse the dead bodies, they rape the women over there. So they were hoping for her to, to be dead on the spot. And yeah, they, they shot her from a zero range. So she was dead on the spot, apparently. Um, I had hope that maybe she got kidnapped and maybe we can free those, those kids Someday, I don't know, the last time that they kidnapped a soldier, it took us five years to find his location. But I have hope that at least we can free those 200 kids and elderly and babies, because those people don't deserve, don't deserve this. So they're probably in a very bad situation, like psychologically and health, very bad health situation. Uh, I know that uh, most of them, been held um, after they already got shot. So they're dying. They in. I saw some videos of the Hamas taking the, the like while I was while I was looking for her. I, I watch hundreds of videos on Telegram and I seen the people that they that they took. Some of them were babies, infants. Some of them were very old people, and most of them were injured, like very badly injured, like with wounds on their legs and in their stomach. So. I really hope that we can free them as fast as we can, because we have we have response like as a country we we have responsible for them like we have respons we have responsibility for them to keep to, to save them. Adara Ayalon, thank you very much for spending a few moments with us. Our deepest deepest condolences to you and to your family and the loss of your loving sister. And as we say, Zichronali Bracha, may her memory be a blessing.